Hello there Virgos, welcome to your February. Before we go into this reading, I just want to preface this. Um, I feel like it's going to be a very good month, but you're going to be extremely, extremely, extremely busy, okay? Um, I feel like many of you are wrapping up new projects so you can start something else. Wrapping up loose ends, um, so I do see a lot of you working late nights, planning something, um, planning events even, or even wrapping up like projects, wrapping up, you know, loose ends so that you can go into something or transition into something new. So the energy is very good for new starts, okay? However, um, you know, a lot of the times too, I feel like with you guys, whenever you do something, you do things to the best of your capabilities. And you're very good at double checking, triple checking your work. And you don't want the responsibility to fall on another person to have to, you know, fix your mistakes, fix your error. Because you feel like, if I made a mistake, you know, that's on me. That's on my credibility at work. That's on my... Um, that That's like, kind of like a, a stain on my ability to perform or my performance. And so you're very hard on yourself in that regard. And I, I do feel like as responsible as you are, um, you always wrap up things to the best of your capabilities rather than handing off, you know, uh, frayed ends and, and um, like difficult cases or difficult projects to another person because you don't want to be a burden to another, the next person. So I feel like there's a lot of pressure that you're putting on yourself and there's a lot of pressure that um, I'm sensing like, you know, there's expectations coming through from the environment, but more than anything, the expectation and the, the pressure is like self-imposed, okay? Wanting things to be wrapped up neatly, wanting things to be uh, perfect, wanting to uh, not have any loose ends, any uh, fray threads, you know, hanging loose. And so I, I do feel in that regard, um, ease up a little bit, okay? Don't put that unnecessary pressure for your on yourself because you have a lot of blessings that are coming through in February. And so I feel like you're expecting a lot from yourself, but the energy of this month is about coasting. Does that make sense? So I feel like if the energy is very much about, you know, slow transitions and a lot of coasting, like riding the wave back to shore, back to calmer waters, and instead of just riding the wave and, and letting things be, I feel almost like you're fighting against the tides. You want uh, these things wrapped up. You want that over there wrapped up. And so take it easy for this month, okay? Everything is going to work out well, and so... No matter how much you obsess over things, no matter how much you go over the, the details, no matter how much you, you know, try to, I guess, um, no matter how much you, you try to, you know, comb things through with a fine tooth comb, it's going to be fine. It's, it, it's just going to be fine. So I feel like the reassurance here, the spiritual message for you guys is pretty much just taking it easy, all right? So, when I was um, shuffling out this spread for you, I saw a scene, it looks like Mongolia, okay? And the reason why I say this is it looks like the Mongolian steppes and you have like um, this little girl, she's not little, she's actually like a teenager. She's wearing like the really colorful tribal clothes and she has a falcon on her hand, okay? So a falconer. Um, she looks like about maybe 14, 15 years old. It's like um, a summer day on the Mongolian steppes. And she's on top of this hill. There's like wind blowing. The grass is swaying and moving a little bit. And I see her looking towards the horizon. Okay, and she's looking towards like um, the sun that is um, still in the sky on the horizon. There's like uh, another big hill and then a lot of trees dotted along the, the horizon. And so she's looking out into the horizon. She has this bird on her hand. She launches the bird and then the bird like takes off flying into the direction that she, she launched it. And um, so it's like a, a few minutes later, she the, the bird kind of comes back to her, lands on her uh, her wrist, 
and it there's like something in its mouth okay like a seed or or something and I, I couldn't tell what it, it, it was, but like it, it looked like a, a brown seed, it looks like a pod, or it looks like something, just something. So basically, um, when I got this image, I was thinking about like scouting, you know, scouting to see what's on the horizon, um, testing the waters a little bit, making sure like, you know, sending out your scouts so that they can retrieve information and bring it back to you. Or I feel like for many of you, you are physically doing this action to kind of like go ahead and see if it's safe further afield for you to venture into. Okay, so the scene is really, I, I feel like it's very empowering because here's this young girl capable of taking care of herself. Like I, I see her alone. She's, you know, there by herself. She's using the resources in her environment that are available at her disposal in order to, you know, get to know what's ahead of her. Okay. And then the whole concept about looking on the horizon and trying to figure out what's over there. Uh, a lot of it has to do also, you know, the spiritual message is like fortune telling, right? It's like seeking advice, seeking knowledge, seeking expertise from somebody who already has either been there and then came back and given you some solid piece of information, like a seed, okay? Like a, a seed has a lot of potential to grow. Or like even um, picking the brains of somebody that has already been there, done that, and then extracting the knowledge for yourself so that when you cross that bridge and get to, you know, whatever location it is on that horizon, then you know exactly what to do. So it, it's more about, I feel like, once again, I feel like you're working really hard and you're doing, like, probably a lot of... Um, I'm sensing like brand new things, okay? And they're really telling you, you know, don't reinvent the wheels, okay? Uh, build on existing knowledge. Um, ask for other people's opinion. Ask for for um, the trusted, con like, ha if you have a trusted confidant at work, you definitely can ask them, like, you know, uh, about their experience. That way you don't have to reinvent the wheels. That way you don't have to do all this extra research because you have people that can, you know, you can retrieve knowledge from and information from, okay? And the information and the knowledge and expertise they're giving you is kind of like containing that seed, is that seed of knowledge or that seed of potential. And I feel like in the long run, it's going to save you a lot more time. And then also in the long run, it's a lot more dependable, okay? Because it's like... Um, primary source of information like someone who's already been there done that does that make sense rather than going through like uh, building doing the research from the ground up from from scholars that might be in their ivory tower and they haven't really experienced it so I hope that makes sense so I feel like in some capacity um, they're telling you here you know work smart rather than work hard don't reinvent the wheels okay don't create unnecessary work for yourself and, you know, a lot of the times, too, Virgos, um, we have a sense of, I, I feel like Virgo and people, you have a sense of skepticism as well about the, the, the work that other people produce, okay? Because, once again, you have a really keen eye for detail. And if, it's, uh, if the information is coming from somebody that you're familiar with and, and you, you know their work and you know their work ethics and you know their capabilities and their skill sets, then you can really trust what they're saying. But if it's just handed to you from an unknown source, I feel like you have trouble trusting it too. And that's why you would rather go through the, take the time and, and you know, do the preliminary research for yourself or the ground up because you trust yourself a lot more than you would trust other people. And so I feel like for this month here, uh, they're saying there's wise advice and wisdom coming from uh, confidants, coming from primary sources and you know, you can save yourself a lot of time. You can cut corners and save yourself a lot of time and end up with more meaningful information, okay? All right, so uh, let me talk about the cards here. Um, you have some amazing cards, okay? So first of all, I'm looking at the cards like this. 
that's what it feels like to me. So let me just read them the way that they kind of uh, resonate with me. We have here the world and the traveler. Okay, brand new starts here. The world is pretty much opportunities galore. It's like all the avenues that might have been blocked in the past, they are finally making themselves available to you, okay? That promotion that was, um, you know, uh, somebody, it's like there, there might have been a job and you were eyeing that job, but there's always somebody occupying that job. Potentially, they're retiring and now that job is open. Okay, so kind of like that, doors opening, opportunities opening, roads, like, it, it just like uh, unrolling, f kind of like ahead of you. So if you feel like you've been in a rut for quite some time when it comes to your life, your work, relationships, even um, professional life, I'm seeing a lot, I feel like a lot of doors are opening, okay? And I feel like you don't even need to lift a finger. The doors are opening because the time is right. And the time is right because you are operating from the space where you have been trying to manifest something brand new. Okay, we have here the traveler. This is the fool. You have been trying to manifest something brand new. You have already mastered whatever it was that you were doing. You have already mastered it. And now, Virgos, you're finally brave enough to take this leap of faith over this cliff and try to get onto the other side and I feel like because you are doing your due diligence and because you are also stepping out of your comfort zone the universe is reciprocating okay you've been wanting new energies for a very very long time and I feel like they're saying this is the year for you this is where things are really going to start to take off okay um, in tandem, we have as well the Nine of Crystals. So this is the Nine of Pentacles. And we have here the Ten of Wands. And this is what I meant about, you know, working smart rather than working hard. You're very good at working uh, hard. You're very, very good at that. No one will, you know, uh, deny that, okay? But in the spirit of saving time, in the spirit of kind of like upping your game a little bit, okay, upping your game a little bit, we need to be a little bit smart about how we're working. Okay, so for example, let me just say this. Um, I feel like somebody, some of you who might be watching this, okay, you might be a paralegal right now and you might be, you know, uh, trying to pass the bar exam, for example, okay? And so what I'm feeling is, you know, you're like, pouring over volumes of books on case laws, on, on, on legal precedents and things like that. And it's very dry and very uninspiring and you're, you know, trying to memorize and trying to cram. When in fact, they're saying, you know, look at the work that you're doing. Ask the people in your work environment. Ask the people, you know, uh, look at the real life cases. Those are a lot more nuanced and they're a lot more juicy, they're a lot more exciting. And if you look at those cases, the information is going to come alive. And so you don't have to cram, you don't have to, you know, try to memorize in such a dry way. So it's about working uh, smart rather than working hard. So this spider here, okay, and the spider, they, they weave their web. Okay, and a lot of the times it gets destroyed, right? Humans like come in and shake them away or insects or whatever animal that runs through the forest. It, they knock it down and then the spider diligently, you know, goes back out, possibly at night, weaves a new web and, you know, just uh, waits for the, the prey to kind of like land on that web. Okay, so this is like working a lot, doing a lot of things in a repetitive way. But it also indicates to me a lot of financial abundance, okay? A lot of financial security, a lot of financial abundance, a lot of um, self-sufficiency. So they're very, spiders are very solitary creatures. And I feel like, you know, everyone's got their own web and everyone minds their own business and everyone pretty much lives for themselves. And so what I'm feeling is, you know, you've worked really hard to build up this foundation for yourself, where you're self-sufficient, you don't want to ask for help. You feel like asking for help might be seen a little bit as a weakness, or even like asking for help is like, oh, I couldn't finish it. And it's, it's, um, 
it's a reflection of my work ethics or my skill set when I can't do something and I have to ask other people for help. And I feel as if you're, you, you feel like in, in this environment, you feel almost like you're working twice as hard and other people are just coasting. And you, you might feel like there might be some imbalance associated with that, okay? This is the Ten of Wands here. And the way that it's depicted in this card, it, we have here this horse. And, you know, horses are draft animals. They can carry a lot of weight and they can, you know, uh, transport uh, people, objects, carry, uh, like pull a wagon. And so I feel like this is like the workhorse, literally the workhorse. This is somebody that other people depend on and other people often take for granted. Other people often dump responsibilities on. And this is a, um, an animal that doesn't complain either, okay? So I feel as if there are definitely, and you know, I've been seeing this for a lot of Virgos, there are a lot of, uh, definitely a lot of things here where you kind of need to draw the line. You kind of need to be a little bit crafty about how you can tell people to back off and, you know, give you your time and respect your space and at the same time to kind of like take care of themselves, like learn to be self-sufficient, you know? It took you a lifetime to learn to be self-sufficient. Why can't they do that themselves? So I feel like, you know, you, you might feel like it's not fair. You might feel like it's uh, your responsibility now or it, it, it's like falls on you or it's incumbent upon you to, you know, pick up the burden for other people. And I feel like in a way that's not very fair. And I feel that in the past, you might have been very much about, you know, um, wanting to serve others, being in the spirit of service, but I do sense for the month of February, you have drawn some boundaries. You have, you know, drawn your line in the sand, demarcate where you will chip in and where you will not because I feel like your energy is a lot more free. This is like saying no to people and not feeling guilty, Virgo. Telling people, you know what, I, I only have five minutes and I need to, you know, use the restroom. I can't help you. I'm sorry, you know, things like that. And doing it in a way where you don't have to feel bad about it. You're not guilt-ridden over not being able to help somebody. You're not guilt-ridden over, like, not bending over backwards for another person when, in fact, they are clearly capable. And so I do sense um, there's a lot of, like, shedding away the mental and emotional baggage and a lot of it has to do with the fact that you've been working for other people, serving other people, uh, helping other people, a lot of people. And I do sense like you do it because, you know, you, you care about the people, right? But at the same time, you start to understand how that drains your energy how that depletes you, how that disallows you from doing things that you want, how that really cuts into your time, how that really, you know, kind of like sidetrack your plans and how that really affects your emotional well-being. And so we're coming from this space where we have like, you know, the deep dive in emotion, where we might feel guilty if we have to say no to people, where we might feel like, um, oh, well, I have an extra five minutes, you know, I can help that coworker, I can help that boss, I can help that person, and, and things like that. And I feel like you do take a lot upon yourself. And this is the month where we need to kind of like do us, focus on us, focus on what we need. And not let other people's problems emotionally burden you, okay? Learning to say no and feeling like you don't need to be apologetic for it. So this is really nice, crisp, refreshing energy. You're leaping towards the future of your life, okay? So what is coming through, I feel for many of you, there's a lot of movement and travel here, okay? And this is like seeing the world traveling to another country, learning about another country, meeting people from different um, cultural, linguistic backgrounds, meeting people who are very, um, I, I also feel like, you know, people who are like major players in their field, like being amongst the people who are the movers and the shakers in the world. 
So if you're, for example, in law, I, I see a lot of lawyers, paralegals, and people in the law profession. If you're in law, you might meet like a very famous judge. You might meet an attorney or somebody, a prosecutor, who's handled like a very famous case. So I feel like there's a lot of um, rubbing elbows with you know people who are very well respected, well received in their field, in their profession. And I also feel like in some way, um, they could be a launching pad for your career or your professional life, okay? Not in a way where we're like using them to or ride their coattails. I feel like what they're telling you is like golden material, great advice, or even like they're opening your mind up in a way that will really streamline the work that you do that will really make you reassess the work or the way in which you've worked in the past. And I feel like they're going to shed some light into your life about working smart rather than working hard, okay? So you have some great new awakening here, as well as revelations, as well as, you know, a lot of help and guidance, physical help and guidance coming through from other people. And this is great. Okay, so I feel like many of you are, are traveling. So I'm seeing here clearing up some time in order to travel. I'm seeing here the Traveler and the Two of Cups. This is the Two of Cups. It's the Dove. It's really sweet. I feel like for some of you, this is like traveling for your honeymoon. You know, traveling as a couple. Traveling for Valentine's Day. Um, it's Valentine's Day in the U.S. So I feel like there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, it's a very nice romantic vibe, especially for coupled people. I feel like someone is, is really going to make this a very memorable month for you when it comes to love and relationships. And some of you could be getting married, getting engaged, getting, um, like taking your honeymoon, traveling to see the world, taking a cruise even, I'm feeling. And it's going to be really, um, like, I'm hearing breathtaking sights, okay? So if, like, it's a cruise, it's going to be very refreshing, very, um, the scenery is going to be quite beautiful, okay? So I'm, I'm seeing that, and I'm really happy to see this for you. So there's a major transformation here. We have the cicada and the two of shells. So this is about transformation in a love relationship, okay? Transformation in a love relationship. And um, what I'm sensing is for many of you, there could be like a upping the ante, taking the relationship to the next level, meeting somebody that you can really get along with, or like having that sense of um, coming together between you and another person. So I feel as if, if you have been single, there's a little bit like nine of crystals, the nine of pentacles is the single, la single lady card, right? You could be male or female watching this, okay? It wouldn't matter. It's like, if you have been single, I feel like there's a transformation when it comes to your relationship, okay? Um, even like uh, taking the, the, the relationship to, to the next level. I'm hearing, and this is um, like posting on social media, changing relationship status, or, you know, posting pictures together for the very first time. So you might have been in a relationship but never advertised it and now you're coming public with the relationship because I feel that you're serious about this person, you know where you stand with them, they likewise are very serious with you and so you feel that it's safe and it's uh, stable enough to bring it out into the open, to show off this person, to be with this person and to, you know, have the two of you recognize as a couple. Um, I feel like for many of you, it's a, it's a big step for you guys because it takes an earth sign a very, very long time to really fall in love and to trust in the stability of a relationship. And they're also, you guys, I feel like are also very, very private overall when it comes to, you know, your romantic life, unless you have like very strong Leo placements in your chart. I feel like with Virgos, everything is very subdued. The relationship is very private, and you like to keep it very private. And as a result of this, I feel like this is like serious escalation in a love relationship in some capacity. Because now you're kind of like um, seen in public with this person, making things uh, public, okay? Making a public announcement. 
and there will be a lot of people looking on and I feel as well um, there's something here that indicates to me two people who are a very very good solid match for each other the two of cups is about you know friendship and harmony it's two people who might be very similar okay like same cultural background it doesn't always have to be but like same upbringing same cultural background even if you are like racially uh, different I feel like there's something about your family that's very similar to their family so for example if you come from like a single um, parent household they might also come from a single parent household if you know you've went to you've gone to like private school your whole life they might have also gone to private school if you went to law school they might have gone to law school so there's something very similar about the two of you, uh, either culturally or, or maybe like even your upbringing or just, you know, your ideologies. This is like two people who really get along, who agree on a lot of things. And as a result of it, the relationship flows very smoothly and there's not a lot of conflict and confrontation and, you know, childish games and things like that. It's a very enlightened relationship where two people really care about each other and they're willing to put each other first, okay? So this is really positive energy. So you've been trying to manifest, I feel, uh, financial stability and a happy home life for quite some time. What we have here is the Ten of Pentacles, okay? And uh, I want to talk about this card a little bit because um, when I saw this, I was thinking immediately, you know, like there was a drought, okay? So the Ten of Pentacles is about property, like a physical dwelling, a house. It's about family. It's about um, financial stability, the foundation for everything that life builds upon. So I feel like for many of you, you've been shying away from relationships. Um, not all of you, but I feel like for the majority of you, there is a uh, shying away from a relationship. Um, and I feel a lot of it has to do with whether or not you believe that relationships can work, whether or not you believe that um, marriage for example is long lasting whether or not you believe that somebody could be you know that we could be committed to and in love with somebody for life okay so the whole concept of like till life um, do us or, or till death do us part the whole concept about living and sharing your space with another person and getting along with the other person and even though you might nitpick at whatever they do, you still, at the end of the day, really, really love them and really care about them as a person and will do right by them. And so the whole concept about, you know, happily ever after, about um, moving in together, buying property and having a marriage that will withstand the test of time, all of it has been very daunting and very, very scary. And let me just say this. I feel like, I feel for many of you, you might have come from like broken homes, okay? There might have been infidelity with mom and dad. There might have been like, um, like growing up in a single parent household where things have been hard, okay? And so things might have been very financially hard and your parents, you know, might have been not emotionally available because they were working all the time. And I feel like everything that you have done, Virgos, you've had to do it on your own. And what I mean by this is like, you might look at, you know, a colleague of yours, and they come from like, you know, a very stable home environment, a very stable like um, upbringing, dad's a lawyer mom's a doctor and so they have you know really intelligent parents who are college educated who have like years and years of schooling and their their parents not only served as like their mentor but their parents had the financial stability to you know put them through school without student loans for example okay and i feel as if in your life, Virgos, everything that you've, you, you have right now, you have had to work really hard for, okay? Mom and dad didn't give you that car when you graduated from college, right? Mom and dad didn't pay for the college tuition. You've had to get out into the world, find a job, pay your student loans. And then mom and dad 
if they were, you know, uh, like blue collar laborers, for example, they couldn't give you the guidance, the expertise when it comes to college admissions, taking the SATs, which is like a college um, exam. Um, you, you take that when you're in secondary school, for those who are not familiar. Um, you take that exam for secondary school so that you can score high enough and then the colleges will accept you. So it's like a, uh, an entrance exam just to see at a baseline level where you are and whether or not you're desirable for a college. So I feel like you've had to meander and figure out these things for yourself. Nobody helped you. Things just, you know, were, were not handed to you on a silver platter. You've had to do the preliminary research. You've had to figure everything out on your own. And I feel as if for many of you, you're looking at your life, okay? Everything that you've had to do based on your upbringing, based on everything that, you know, that has happened to you. And then you're looking at your, your colleague's life, that same colleague who came from a really, really stable home environment. And now you're realizing, wait a minute, we're on the same level. Or even, I'm surpassing that person. Because, you know, hardship builds character. Okay? And so, I feel like a lot of the times the universe gives us challenges to strengthen us, okay? Because we're meant for a lot more. And what I feel here is, once again, another confirmation for you that Every night you're out there spinning that web, you know, setting your life up a certain way, making sure that the next day that the web is set up, uh, an insect is going to fly to it, and then you're going to have your meal and you're not going to starve. Like all this planning, all this preparatory work, there's a purpose for it, okay? Because I feel like you're being groomed, you're being prepped for something a lot more in your future and so whatever work that you've had to do it might feel tedious it might feel very challenging it might feel hard and you felt like it's not fair sometimes that other people get the free ride or get to coast okay but Virgos you're never resentful of other people and you look at them and you're glad that you know they never had to struggle the way you have but what I feel here is life is prepping you for a lot more, okay? And you have surpassed that colleague that has had everything handed to them on a silver platter because whatever challenges you've had to face, whatever water is collecting in puddles, all the animals are coming out to, to graze, all the animals are coming to the watering hole, okay? So... There's enough water, there's enough vegetation that's going to be coming into the future for you guys. And so I feel like if we are reading this, you know, this might be uh, last year, 2019, I feel like there were things that were a little bit tenuous and a little bit hard. And then I feel as well, the springtime, the, the wellspring is kind of like bubbling up to the surface and there's vegetation again. So we're no longer dealing with that space of drought, uh, drought. We're no longer dealing with scarcity. We're no longer dealing with this, you know, lack mentality. Because now, not only are you financially abundant, but you're coming into your sense of, you know, everything that I've been through has taught me so much. And now, I feel for many of you, you might feel a little bit invincible. You might feel like, Oh, I've done that in the past, you know, throw, give me something else, give me something harder. So I, I do sense that you're welcoming new challenges, you're welcoming new opportunities, you're leaping towards something that might be outside of your scope of comfort, but you're welcoming it in because you know it's a chance for you to grow. Okay, so there has been a lot of manifesting, manifesting so that you can grow to your full potential. This is the magician. And... Um, Every time I see this card, you know, the, the cawing that the, the, the crows make, the cawing, cawing sound, it seems like it's saying to me, calling, calling, manifesting, calling something in, conjuring something out of nothing, and drawing something closer to you because 
once again, you are operating in a space where it's like the wellspring. Things are going to be coming to life. The vegetation is returning. The ground is, you know, soaking up the rainwater and allowing everything to grow and allow the, the, that abundance to fill the land, okay? So finances are looking very, very good for you. Um, and I feel like the, the financial situation is really allowing you, is really allowing you to, um, I guess, like, to really finally have a lot of confidence in yourself. So a lot of people respond differently, right? So for like an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra, in order for them to feel confident about themselves, if somebody tells them, wait a minute, that was a really good idea you came up with the other day, they would beam with pride, with so much joy and pride because somebody is complimenting them on their intelligence, right? They would be so happy. And I feel like for a water sign, if you make that emotional connection with them, like, thank you so much for, you know, your kindness. Thank you so much for, you know, being there when I needed you. They would beam and glow with pride. But I feel like for you guys, it's like, I need to see it first before I believe it, okay? People tell me I'm good, but I need to see it before I believe it. And so when those pentacles stack up, when you have that house, that car, that job title, that corner office, when you have these physical things, not that you care so much about these physical things, but these are physical manifestations. These are like tangible things that you can trust in to let you know that, you know, you're a really good worker, you're, you're successful, you've made it. These are like indicators to you that you've made it. And so I feel like, you know, in the past you felt like you, you weren't there. I'm, I'm not there yet. I'm, I, people say that I'm good, but I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm really good. And this is the month where you have evidence, okay? The, the pentacles are stacking up. And then we have as well the alleviation of your burden okay so we have here ten of wands which is like the draft animal and then we have the nine of wands and the nine of wands is like looking very skeptically look at this leopard looking very very skeptically and trying to figure out you know where can I cut corners where can I work smart about this um, and being critical about what projects, how to do things and work, what projects are worth doing or worth investing in so that you can move forward with a more light, lighter load, okay? So I feel that towards the end of the month, it's going to be like the, the wellspring, the springtime. The beginning of the month of February, um, there's a lot of planning, a lot of, a lot of logistics work, behind the scenes work that you've got to do. And I would just want to say, you know, try to ride the wave. Um, don't push yourself too hard and especially don't be so hard on yourself, okay? And we have as well the Three of Cups. This is celebration, good news coming into the, the picture for you. Whatever you have been manifesting, there's good news associated with it and there is amazing um, opportunities for you to connect with people who are like, you know, your kindred, great opportunities for you to get whatever it is that your heart truly desires, Virgo. So we have some amazing things coming through that will really lighten the load, lighten your burden. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people manifesting with their heart and the heart feels like, it feels like heart palpitation. Um, heart palpitation usually indicates to me like nervousness. Not medically, but, you know, whenever I associate, when I see heart palpitation or I feel it, I associate it with, like, nervousness. Wanting something really, really badly, but the implication of it is, like, I'm not sure if I can handle it. I'm not sure if it's good for me. And so I feel like the best thing that you can do is manifest from the heart space and, you know, send out to the universe. I want that if you feel it is the best thing for me. And I think that things will be coming in that would be very much in alignment with you because they are the best things for you, okay? So ride the wave and uh, don't tense up. 
and I feel like don't be afraid, okay? I'm going to leave it at that, Virgos. I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this reading finds you well. I hope that it provides clarity or guidance or, you know, whatever advice you can extract from it. I hope that it is helpful for you. As we progress into February 2020, it's going to be a very good month, okay? So just like the, the first few days or the first week of February, don't let that, that get to you. The energy is going to clear up and it's going to be smooth sailing. Um, for those who are interested in a reading, I do have a link in the description box below for a colleague. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California. She's a psychic and she is amazing. So I highly recommend that you get a reading with her.